Before I head out to the range, I make sure I have my tripod. And a bag that I can hang. When we're at the range, I'll show you how I use this. Some tape and this is a short length of PVC. I think it's it's half inch. I lay this on the siding notch of the lab radar and tape it in place. I get much better results aiming the uh, lab radar using this than, than the siding notch alone. And I'll show you that in the uh, more out of the range. Make sure I have the battery and its USB cable. And I use the button and I check the uh, charge level and make sure I got sufficient charge for what I want to do at the range. I've created a form that I use when I'm in the field to document my testing. It's got location, date, weather, temperature, load description. It might be something like my 25 yard load, 50 yard load. For others it could be your minor power factor load, your major power factor load. Whatever description makes sense to you. Bullet manufacturer type, weight, caliber, or diameter. Powder manufacturer brand, weight, overall length, crimp, primer brass, velocity range. I just circle which one I use for the series. Power, I circle which one. The shot series number, the number of shots in the series, and then the different distances I set. And in this area is where I'll take additional notes. I intentionally designed it this way so that there is one piece of paper per shot series. This allows me to easily associate my notes with that series. And then in the accessory pocket, you can take your quick setup guide, your user manual, which can come in handy especially the user manual in case you have questions about the operation. And what I do on the uh, quick start guide, I take it, kind of use it as a checklist. Some of the things that they say to check, I do that as part of my preparation before I go to the range. I did two changes to it. Arm time, they suggest 60 seconds. I change it to 120 because most of my testing is with a handgun. So there's some magazine reloads during the series. And I just want to give myself time to reload magazines to continue shooting without the unit dearming itself. The other thing I wrote down to check is the projectile weight. And I actually have to do that really before each series. In my case, I also make sure I've got my tripod head quick release plate attached to the unit. And I've got a large O-ring attached here and I'll show you how I use that in the field. If you use batteries instead of a battery pack, you'd want to make sure that you have your batteries with you so you can install them. I make sure I have my SD card installed. If you're going to have friends or acquaintances come out and, and use your unit to test their velocities, I suggest you tell them to bring their own SD card because it's much easier for them to just take their card home with them than you try to dump it to the computer and then email it to them because there's actually quite a bit of files that are collected when this thing captures velocities. Another thing I do is power it on and check the velocity range. I've got it set to handgun. If I was going to test rifle, I'd need to change that. I would check my velocity units. I've got feet per second, which is what I want. I've got distance unit, which is yards, which I want. It's displaying the current series. I've been going to preferences. I've already checked velocity units. I've already checked distance units. If I shot air gun and I measured my pellets and grams, and I'm going back and forth. I would check in here to make sure I've got it set to the appropriate. In this case, it is. I got to grains. Velocity range, I've already checked that. Projection offset, that's how far the muzzle is going to be from the unit. I usually check that out in the field once I get things set up. I set my set distances. This I definitely want to check. I've got distance one at 20 yards. I got it at 
25, distance 3 is 40, distance 4 is 50, distance 5, it used to be 55, I've actually dropped it to 52 because I'm not sure I got that much distance between my 50 yard distance and the, and the front of the large berm, so I dropped it to 52. So I got my distance set. Projectile weight, talked about that on the quick reference card. Got this set to 160. If I was going to go out and the first thing I was going to test was like 185 or 200, I'd go ahead and change it now. Arm time, I've got it for 120. Screen saver, trigger source, that should be trigger. I doubt I ever change it to Doppler, but it's good to check. Trigger level, I think I usually leave it as one. That's the most sensitive level. If when I get out to the range, there's other shooters and it's causing the unit to start trying to capture velocities when I'm not ready, I'll decrease sensitivity by increasing the trigger level. Channel, I don't need to change that unless there's other people out there with their lab radars and we start interfering with each other's signals and we'll talk and set a separate channels. Power should always be standard for what I'm doing. The time factor read about. So I've got the unit checked out. Preferences have been set the way I need it. So you just watch me set it up for a typical session. But for the purposes of this video, I thought I'd change a few parameters. I don't compete in a sport that uses power factor, but I thought it would be interesting to go ahead and set it up to calculate power factor at an appropriate distance. As you may recall, the lab radar uses the distance you set at DX1 to calculate power factor. I was reading through the 2019 USPSA competition rules, and on page 88 in appendix C2, in the first paragraph, it does say radar sensing units are acceptable provided they are set up and operated according to the manufacturer's directions. And in paragraph 3, it says the closest sky screen, and of course the sky screen is what would be on a traditional chronograph, must be placed no less than 10 feet from the shooting location. So based on that, I want to set DX1 to 10 feet. To do that, I went into preferences and under distance units, I'm going to change it to feet. Velocity units, I'm going to leave the same as feet per second. Then on set distances, see how it says feet now? I'm going to change that to 10. I'm going to leave DX2 the same. I'm going to leave that the same. So we're going to leave it DX4, 150 feet. And I originally set it up for 52 yards, which is 156 feet. So we're going to leave it there. All right, so at this point, we're going to take it out to the range and see what we can do. I'm out at the range, started getting things set up. Unfortunately, the wind started kicking in. It doesn't look like it's going to die down. So I'm going to pack it up, head on home, and come back at a better day for testing velocities. Okay, back out of the range. This is a much better day as far as wind is concerned. Let me give you an overview of the range. Uh, looking at the still image, you see the bench, the 25-yard berm. It's just high enough to protect the bases of the, of the targets. Then you'll see a 50-yard berm which again is just high enough to protect the base of the target. Then you see the large berm. I've actually placed my target not on a 50 yard stand, but on the berm because I'm trying to measure out to 50 yards and I don't want the radar bouncing off the cardboard at 50 yards because I want the bullet to travel past 50 yards so I can get a reliable reading. You probably may hear some shooting in the background. I also hear a lot of crickets and it's rained here recently, so I guess they're out to do their thing. Let me show you how I've got things set up. Because I'm shooting a handgun standing, I need the unit raised on a tripod, not flat on the bench. To aim it, I don't find the sighting knots too useful, so I got a short length of PVC, tape it on top, and the way I aim it is I center the target in the front aperture, if you will, and then I center the front aperture into the rear aperture. To protect the battery pack, I actually have an o-ring on the side, this bag attached to the o-ring, and inside is the battery pack. So we're going to get started, we turn the unit on. If this light does not turn on and you're using a battery pack, that means the battery pack is turned off. 
you just press the charge level display button until the charge shows up. Then you can turn it on. It go through its startup screen and it goes into the current shot series. I'm ready to start shooting. I have to arm the device. So the first press of the arming button takes it into the arm mode, but to get it to transmit the radar, I have to press it again. This goes orange. As I shoot, watch this orange light. When it picks up the muzzle blast, blinks one time. It's just letting you know it's picked up the blast. And once it's calculated the velocities, it'll display it here. You don't want to shoot too quickly, because if you do, you're not giving it time to calculate the velocities from the previous shot. So what I do is I shoot, glance up here, and when the new velocity shows up, then I take the next one. And what I want to do, just for demonstration purposes, I want to let this time out. And when it starts to time out, this will start blinking orange. And then when it goes blue, the radar is no longer transmitting. And we'll just reactivate it. See how it's, see how it's blinking and then turn blue? So the radar has disarmed itself. So I need to rearm it. It's not a big deal. Just press the arming button. Takes me back to where I left off. Press it again, and it's transmitting again. So this means that if you're running some velocities and it disarms itself, that's okay. Just rearm it and keep going. It will keep adding shots to this series until you create a new series. Don't know if you can see this display. Let me show you still the display that I took previously. But what you'll see on the left hand side is some horizontal bars. That's like on your cell phone. It's telling you the strength of the signal. So it's got a really good strength. It's telling you the velocity at zero distance. Giving you the velocities that you asked for. Giving you the shot series, the shot number. And if you look, there's a little black arrow in the upper right. That's just telling you which internal microphone, the left one or the right one, picked up the muzzle blast. Okay, at this point, I'm done. So I want to turn off the radar and go back into review mode. And to do that, you just press and hold the arm button. When you go through the documentation, you'll read information about the view mode and the arm mode. Sometimes the view mode is also called the review mode. View mode and review mode are the same thing. So now that we got some shots on our SD card, let's go over the differences and what you can do in the view mode and the arm mode. Whenever you power the unit on, you automatically go into the review mode. To switch from the view mode to the arm mode and to go back from the arm mode to the view mode, is the arming button and we'll show you that in a minute. We're in the view mode and it defaults to showing you the current series. This particular card 
has four series in it. Series four is new, there's no shots, but I can use the scroll button to go down and look at the different series. This is showing the information for the series. If I press enter, I go into the series and I see the individual shots. If I wanted to, I could use the delete button to delete a specific shot. In this case, I do not, so I'm going to press enter for no. When I'm in the shots, when I press enter again, I go back to the series. And if I use the delete button, I can actually delete the entire series, which I do not. I can use the new series button to create a new series. In this case, I do not. So I'm going to press no. And the display button just toggles me between series information and the preferences. Now let me show you the view mode when there's only one series on the SD card. So I'm going to power off. Okay, this card, there's only one series, so I cannot scroll up and down between series. The series does have shots on it. It has 10. I can press enter, and I can see the specific shots. If you notice, as I scroll up and down, that's shot 11 and that's shot 9. There is no shot 10. The reason there's no shot 10, as I was taking the shot, I had a headwind. So I didn't trust the velocity readings on that. So right after the shot, I deleted the shot and then kept shooting. Now, let's talk about the arm mode. If I press the arm button once, even though the light doesn't change, the display does because I'm now in arm mode. Here it's showing this is shot 11, and this is the velocity at zero distance. Here's my other velocities. If I press the display button, I actually scroll through velocity information to kinetic energy and power factor information to kinetic energy information, power factor, back to velocity. Now, if I wanted to, I could delete this shot, but I'm not going to. If I wanted to delete previous shots, I would have to leave the R mode back into review mode and delete previous shots. Create new series does not work here. That works in preview mode. All right, to actually go into the arm mode where I can collect velocities, I press the arm button again. This goes orange. And the next time I shoot, this becomes shot 12, and the information will be displayed here. To leave arm mode and go back to preview mode, press and hold the arm button until the series information is displayed. Now in R mode, I don't have to activate the radar to go back to review mode. I just have to press and hold the arm button until the display changes. This concludes this video. But if you would like to watch the other videos in the introduction series, you'll find the links here. Otherwise, I hope this video was useful to you, and thank you for watching.